Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 where today we'll be taking a look at the competitive racing license system for the game and how it works when racing online. Now the system is new to Project Cars 2 as it didn't exist in the first game but it is essentially an online rank that gets affected by your actions and results in practice qualifying and race sessions when participating in ranked online lobbies. Now racing in unranked lobbies where the racing license system is turned off will of course have no effect on your competitive racing license. If you go over into the driver network profile via the My Profile tab on Race Central, over on the left hand side of the stats page here you'll be able to see your competitive racing license and this is actually broken down into a number of parts. This includes your safety grade, your strength rating, your rank and then your player privileges. Now your safety grade is represented by the letter that is shown before the numbers and the numbers are actually your strength rating. The safety grade itself indicates how clean you are as a driver. When first starting online you'll begin with a safety grade of U which is the lowest safety grade rating and then you can work to improve this and work up through F, E, D, C, B, A grades and then the highest safety grade is S which obviously represents the cleanest and fairest drivers within the community. Now your actions when playing in online ranked lobbies will have a big influence on your safety grade. Driving dirty, such as making contact with other drivers, whether that's another player or AI, colliding with trackside objects, going off track and exceeding track limits, and also spinning or losing control of the car will all negatively impact your safety grade. If a number of these happen in quick succession, such as you hitting another player and then you spin off into the gravel, only the most severe incident of those that happen in quick succession will actually be counted and then obviously in this case there will be you actually making contact with another driver as spinning off doesn't have an as big an impact on your safety grade as making contact with other cars does. However one thing to note with all contact is that every piece of contact will be counted so if you have collision with multiple drivers in quick succession and you pinball off of two or three cars relatively quickly each piece of contact with another car will be counted towards your safety grade and not just the one. I shall warn you now that making contact with other drivers affects both drivers who were involved with the contact. The system does not appoint blame to one of the drivers so instead it puts the blame on both drivers and therefore both drivers get negatively impacted on their safety grade when involved in contact. Now in order to actually gain in your safety grade you'll need to drive clean but also need to expose yourself to risk. Whilst driving clean laps without going off track or hitting any trackside scenery will increase your safety grade, the most effective way is to get close to other drivers without making contact and to perform clean overtakes. If you expose yourself to risk at racing speeds by driving in close proximity to other players without touching one another, your safety grade will greatly improve. The actual progress to the next grade is represented by the bar highlighted on the competitive racing license which actually shows your current grade and then your progress to the next grade up and it's done in the, in the form of the percentage bar that you can see on screen. This progress will move up and down depending on your actions and how clean you were in the session and whilst practice and qualifying do have an impact on your safety grade they'll have less of an impact than they would compared to the race. You should also note that your safety grade actually gets affected during the manual cooldown lap as well. So whilst it may be fun to smash other drivers during that manual cooldown lap, you will actually negatively impact your safety grade, so make sure you stay clean even at the end of the race. Next up is your strength rating, which represents how good you are as a driver in terms of success by finishing high in race results tables and also winning races. This is represented by the number after your safety grade and will start at 1500 when you first start racing in online lobbies and then the lowest number you can go down to is 100 and then the highest is 5000. This will rise and fall depending on how successful you are against other players whilst racing in online lobbies and it essentially works as an ELO rating with an ELO style system. Your strength rating is only applicable to race sessions, so practice and qualifying sessions do not affect your strength rating and neither does racing against AI opponents when racing in online ranked lobbies as well. They're not taken into the calculation of your strength rating. Also to note with this is you'll only be compared against other players who are within the range of 400 points above your strength rating and 400 points below your strength rating. For instance, if you had a strength rating of 1,500, 
you will only be compared against players who are within the range of 1,100 to 1,900. Anyone outside of that in your lobby will not be counted in the comparison and won't affect your strength rating. For each race session that you go into online, you'll be compared against the players within the applicable range of your rating and then the system will calculate an expected finishing position. If you beat the expected finishing position for that race, you'll gain points on your strength rating, but if you fail to beat it, you will lose points. More points are gained by beating opponents with a higher rating than your own within the obviously 400 point window above your own rating, and whilst beating opponents with a lower strength rating will also positively impact your rating, it will have less of an effect with less points gained than compared to beating someone who's got more points than you. In the case of doing multi-class racing within an online rank lobby, a player will also score bonus points if they beat another player using an inferior vehicle. For example, if you are in the LMP3 class and you beat a player who's in the LMP2 class, you'll get a little bit of an additional bonus towards your strength rating for beating that player in a slower car. As already mentioned, failing to beat the expected finishing position will cause you to lose strength rating, with losing to opponents with a lower strength rating than yourself having a bigger impact than losing to those who have a bigger strength rating than yourself. Also, disconnecting from a lobby will unfortunately impact your strength rating in a negative way as well. Whether this is forced by you actively leaving the lobby itself or whether it's an undesired effect of unfortunately dropping out and losing connection to the lobby or the lobby host, it will negatively impact your strength rating. There has, however, been a recent change in patch 3 with regards to how this works, where now the system will now take into account how much of the race you have completed and your race position at the time of you leaving the session. So if you were to disconnect at the start of the race in a low racing position with more drivers in front of you, you will see a bigger negative impact to your strength rating than if you were to disconnect in the lead with 90% of the race complete. You'll have less of an impact there and your rating won't drop as much. In addition to these, there are also some additional scoring factors with regards to your online rank, which is determined by the colour of the strip on your competitive licence. Now this strip effectively represents the number of races you have completed online with a rookie level being from 0 races up to 50, amateur from 51 races up to 100, semi-pro from 101 races to 200, pro from 201 races to 350, and then veteran being more than 351 online races completed. Rookie will be coloured blue, amateur is coloured bronze as shown on my own licence here on the screen, semi-pro will be silver, pro is gold, and then Veteran is a cool multicoloured pattern and it looks rather quite nice and funky. These levels will also come into play with your strength rating, as will affect the ratio or multiplier of the points scored towards your strength rating at the end of the race. For instance, a pro player losing to an amateur player will lose more reputation strength in comparison to losing against another pro player. Likewise, beating a Veteran player as a semi-pro player, you will gain a bigger bonus in strength rating than if you were to beat a rookie as a semi-pro player. The final part of the competitive racing license is your privileges, which determines the type of community events and esports events that the players will be eligible to enter based on their safety grade and strength rating. Now ultimately, the following are the thresholds for entering certain events, so to be able to enter qualifier events, you will need a safety grade and a safety strength of D1000. For challenger events, you need a rating and grade of B2000 and then for championship esports events you need a grade and a rating of A4000. Now these thresholds may vary depending on the player base and their strength and grade values as currently the majority of the players are still in and around the default levels so the thresholds are lower for each of the different threshold levels and obviously differ to the thresholds that I've just mentioned there but over time, these will change and start to creep back towards the thresholds that I just mentioned as the player base gets more spread out. We have more players and they have a larger range in terms of their rating and obviously the full eSports seasons and everything get underway. That's when you'll start to see the thresholds change and head more back towards the mentioned values. Now just quickly as well, in the bottom left here, you can see a history chart of your online ranking. 
This displays both your safety grade and safety rating from the last few races, with the bar and the bar chart increasing or decreasing based on your safety grade. As you can see here, I've got one bar that was D1439. Now I did a race and I dropped down into the E safety grade, and then the next race I went back up to D once again, and you can see the dip in the trend in the bar chart there. For the final part of this episode, we'll take a look at distinguishing what lobbies are ranked lobbies and what lobbies are unranked. So over in the quick play section, under browse online, when you go into the multiplayer browser, you will see the list of all the lobbies that are displayed there, and then they'll have a number that is put down at the minimum grade column, which will indicate the minimum grade that you need to have in order to enter that online lobby. If the letter and numbers in these are marked green, then that means that you have the minimum grade required in order to enter that lobby. However, if you find any that are red, and I'm just having a quick look through here, so this lobby here, Paula's GT3, I will not be able to enter that lobby because I do not have the minimum grade required in order to enter into it. And that obviously is indicated with the red letters there and also the red number, as you can see, uh, even though I've got the strength rating to be able to enter it, I don't have the minimum safety grade in order to enter that lobby. And any lobbies that are marked with off, that means that these lobbies are unranked. There is no competitive racing license system switched on for those. So you'll be able to join those and race on them free of worry of having your license affected by your actions in those lobbies. Now, in order to set these minimum requirements, the lobby host will choose them when creating a lobby via the create online custom event option. So we've got this down here with the create new, likewise with the create online event back here on race central and over in the rules and regulations section, you'll have a competitive racing license option here. Now, when this is switched to off, it means that the lobby that you're creating will be unranked. However, if you switch this to on your lobby will then become a ranked online lobby. Now turning this option on will expose the minimum competitive license required option here where you can go in and set the minimum safety grade and reputation strength that players will need in order to join your lobby. Now the highest that you can set this is your own safety grade and also strength rating. So I can only go as high as D because I'm a D1466 I believe. Yep, 1466. So going quickly back into here, I can't go any higher than D in my safety grade and likewise with my strength rating, I can't go any higher than 1,466. So your own rating is the highest that you can set it to, so you will essentially become the lowest ranked player in your lobby. One thing to note though is that this could impact the number of players joining your lobby. Whilst increasing the minimum values may see you get closer or potentially faster players depending on what you set the strength rating value to, less people may be able to join your lobby. Whereas using a lower grade and strength rating may allow for more people to join your lobby but possibly at the detriment of racing quality as there may be more players who aren't as clean or have the driving ability and pace of the higher ranked players. Finding the right balance of this will get the good amount of players into your lobby but also get good clean and fair racing. And if you do find a good bunch of drivers that you enjoy racing against, make sure to add them as a friend and race with them in the future in future online ranked lobbies. So that's going to conclude it for this episode. If you do have any comments or questions feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I shall try and get back to you as soon as I can. Other than that, Please consider subscribing to the channel for more content in the future and hopefully I shall see you in the next video. In the meantime, take care.